Hello again, Larry Satchwell here. We had a cold, windy, blustering night last night, and I woke up this morning and found this. This is a bird feeder that I've made probably 15 years ago. I've repaired it several times. I originally had glass panes in it, and uh, they broke, so now it's plexiglass. I've repaired the uh, perches a couple of times, and not long ago, actually. Uh, maybe uh, a month ago. So it's time to rebuild this. I have a piece of cypress left over from the uh, picnic table renovation. So the first thing I'm going to do is plane it down to size a little bit. I like the dimensions of this. I'm going to keep the dimensions the same. I think the roof needs to be a little bit bigger. And for that I'll have to glue some wood up. Let's get started. So in the old design, I, you can see I had a piece of wood down here, and I've drilled several holes in it several times, actually. I hot glued the wire in here the last time I fixed it, but it's still growing seeds, and that's not good. So I'm going to replace the entire bottom this time with just an aluminum screen. I didn't want this glue joint to fall in the middle, so I've cut one a little bit larger than the other, and now we'll just glue those up. Tight Bond 2 is water resistant, Tight Bond 3 is waterproof. It's what is used to glue up cutting boards. Once it's dry, it's completely safe. Won't cause any harm to the birds. Once I have that glued up, I can set that aside and take it off in the morning. So back in the scrap bin, I have this wood that is seven eighths, and I really would like to put the plexiglass in a little bit deeper groove. So I'm going to use this wood out of the scrap pile. I need to cut it down to four inches and then ten and a half. So I went ahead and partially disassembled this. I'll set this at zero. And it looks like I've set this at 85 degrees. Honestly, do not remember how I cut this groove before, but this is the way I'm going to do it today. I have a five degree angle here from a scrap. A little piece held on here with some screws. And I will put it in here and run it through the table saw. It's been 24 hours, and here's where I fixed my mistake. I uh, have two extra saw curves in here, so I filled those up. My granddaughter Peyton gave me a, an eraser for big mistakes. Unfortunately, it doesn't work on wood. I take my block clean. It is a lot easier to cut this through groove here on the table saw. It was the safest way to do it, but now I don't have any way for the glass to stop moving down. Plexiglass that is. So what I need to do now is put the plexiglass even with the top. And using the same kind of shim I just used for the sides, I 
nice tight fit. So while those two pieces are drying, I can turn my attention back to the top here. These are scraps wrapped with packing tape so they don't glue down. Mostly don't glue down. Ah, I put the piece up without the packing tape for another big mistake. Peyton knows me well. So I just took this over to the table saw. One of the things that the old roof did not have was a drip line. So I've cut a small kerf all along the perimeter of this so that when the water comes over the top, it'll catch on that kerf and won't go down into the seed. Uh, this is really a wide top and I doubt if it would ever migrate that far but just another precaution. I have all the inserts here trimmed so it looks like it was made to be that way. So now I can put the plexiglass in and determine the size I need to cut for the other parts. These ended up being 11 and a quarter by 2 and I wanted, want there to be some expansion room for the wood and the plexiglass because they will move in the weather. I noticed on my original there that I had used my nail gun. That's probably because I had just gotten my nail gun and wanted to play with it. That was about 10 or 15 years ago. Here I'm going to screw and I want to make sure that I don't screw into that plexiglass so I'm going to pre-drill I have some inch and a quarter square drive screws that I'm going to use in this that is clear of the plexi Now we'll flip it over to the other side and I'll use a piece of cutoff so that it all stays even. All right, it's coming together. It's about 10 inches. I have this piece centered up here. so. Time to drill into it. Now I'm going to insert a doll here. The dolls are 12 and a half inches. And these are going to be the first things to go. These are probably birch. I just got them at the big box store. So I will be replacing these. So no glue. They do last for several years though. And then I want to put this over here. Now I do have a center line here and for whatever reason it is lined up perfect. So again drilling an anchor hole here. Looking 
pretty good. We're almost there. I've got the dolls in, both ends in. One more thing I want to do is to put a little four penny nail, so galvanized four penny nail, right in this hole. Now if it slips in there a little bit too easy, all you have to do is put a slight bend in it. And that's too much. Now, the reason for that is this birch doll is going to rot out about a year or several years before the cypress will. So the next time I need to change this out, all I have to do is take a pair of pliers and pull that pin. And then I can cut another dowel and drive it all the way through both sides. Now that could probably get away with leaving it like that, but I'm kind of a belt and suspender kind of guy, so I'm going to cut some strips to put on there. So I have a sixteenth of an inch drill bit, and I don't want this to split out, so I'm going to pre-drill some holes right here in this. I've given the lid here a coat of boiled linseed oil. I'll clean these plates up and then go hang it up.